Come on now, Theresa May. I shake that, shake that, shake that murder tree. So, what really annoys me is this Conservative government, in power right, right now, they keep on banging on about how there's no magic money tree, right? For, for things like the NHS and education and so on. And yet, with a quick Google search, UK qualitative easing, total amount. There we go. <clears throat> As you can see, we've got what is quantitative easing with the BBC News. Quantitative easing, frequently asked questions, Bank of England. Thought UK quantitative easing was over, not quite, city wire money, and so on. So, so let's have a little look at this, uh, what is quantitative easing, BBC News. So I'll just uh, click on that now. Right, what is quantitative easing? Governments and central banks like there to be just enough growth in an economy. Not too much that could lead to inflation getting out of control, but not so little that there is stagnation. Their aim is the so-called Goldilocks economy, not too hot, but not too cold. One of their main tools they have to control growth is raising or lowering interest rates. Lower interest rates encourage people or companies to spend money rather than save. Uh, well, when interest rates are at almost zero, as they have been since, <laughs> central banks need to adopt different tactics, such as pumping money directly into the financial system. And this process is known as quantitative easing, or QE. How does it work? The central bank buys assets, usually government bonds, with money it has printed, or more accurately, created electronically. It then uses this money to buy bonds from investors such as banks or pension funds. This increases the overall amount of usable funds in the financial system, making more money available is supposed to encourage financial institutions to lend more to business and individuals. It can also push interest rates lower across the economy, even when the central bank's own rates are just about as low as they can go. This in turn should allow businesses to invest and consumers to spend more, giving a knock-on boost to the economy. A right, little diagram there. Waffle, waffle, waffle. What are the risks? The biggest concern is that pumping more money into the economy could ultimately lead to an inflation problem. When inflation is close to zero, as it is in the UK and the Eurozone at the moment, a bit more upward pressure on prices can be seen as a good thing. But some politicians and economists have opposed the idea of QE in principle because they believe in the long run there is a danger that it could create too much inflation. Others argue that extra money is just to bolster the price of some assets, such as shares and property in some countries. And there we go. Who has tried QE? Both the Bank of England and the US Federal Reserve embarked on QE in the wake of the 2008 financial crisis. The last time they fucking, I mean, the last time they robbed us, in an attempt to stimulate economic growth. And between 2008 and 2015, that's two years ago, mind, the US Federal Reserve in total bought bonds worth more than 3.7 trillion dollars. The UK created 375 billion pounds, or 550 billion in dollars, of new money in its QE program between 2009 and 2012. Then in August 2016, the Bank of England said it will buy 60 billion of UK government bonds and 10 billion of corporate bonds, amid uncertainty over the Brexit process and worries about productivity and economic growth. Now, my argument would be, is the banks were the ones that got us in this mess in the first place and all these years of austerity, and yet we gave them more money to the tune of, what was it, £375 billion. Pounds. Now, what if we had given that money to the people? Because I can guarantee you, by giving it to the banks, all that's going to happen is they're going to squirrel it away in offshore accounts, but if you're giving it to the people, a quantitative easing for the people, a quantitative easing for the people, mind, that money, that money would have got spent. You know, the average person, they would have bought a holiday, they would have bought a new car to get to work, they would have done all sorts of things with it. But, we give it to the banks, and where does it go? <sighs> Just 
magics away. But we would have spent it back into the real economy. And we would have actually invested indirectly in all the little businesses and the big businesses and, and all the products and all, the, all of the things that we need. We would have bought them. And that would have improved the economy tenfold. But oh no, we give it to the banks, don't we?